GOP can finally point to a new report detailing how an American president made millions from business dealings with foreign countries. But unfortunately for them, it's not Joe Biden. It's ex-president Donald Trump. It's the result of a years-long investigation by Democrats on the House Oversight Committee, cut short once Republicans took control of the House. Documents show that during his presidency, Donald Trump's businesses received $7.8 million in payments from at least 20 foreign countries, including China. The payments went to Trump properties, including his hotels in Washington, D.C., in Las Vegas, and New York. But here's the thing. They were not approved by Congress, as is required under the Constitution. Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett sits on the Oversight Committee that released this report, and she joins me now. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining me. I want Absolutely. to... Thank you. I, I want you to, to walk us through all of these different findings and help us understand exactly why this isn't constitutional. Okay, so I'm going to start with the why. Okay. Because I think that's the part that most people are really not understanding is the implications of it. And so basically, when we think back to the purpose of this and where our founders stood, it was about making sure that there would not be interference from foreign countries on our democracy here and on our president. And so the reason that our presidents are not allowed to accept these funds is to make sure that there's not even the appearance that there is some funny business that's going on. It's similar to the ethics guidelines that we live by as members of the House, as well as when we're starting to talk about our judges. So that's what that's why this matters. Mm -hmm. Number two. There's been a lot of talk about the fact that, oh, he gave the profits to the Treasury. Well, first of all, we don't know what he did because we don't have the records. And Chairman Comer decided, you know what? Never mind. We don't want you to continue to give over records. So we do not have the, the full picture, number one, mm -hmm. to determine what the profits look like. But it doesn't matter. The law itself says that you can't take it. It doesn't matter that we get the profits. None of that matters. You can't take it at all without the approval of Congress. Now, let's talk about it. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, what, well, I, I, I was going to stop you for a second because you mentioned that, that Chairman Comer didn't want you all to keep digging. And I guess the question is why? I, what is he so afraid of, in your opinion? I, I think you know what he's afraid of. We Tell all us. know that Trump is corrupt. I think we're all being, you know, a little too polite and politically correct. So Trump say, is corrupt. Okay. And authority. Like, he is corrupt, and so are every single Republican that sits in the House that wants to go out and pretend that he's not and wants to coddle him and protect him. The problem is that when we are elected, we are not elected to serve at the will of Trump. We are elected to serve at the will of the people, and that's where the Republicans have gotten it wrong. So let's talk about exactly what happens and whether or not this is just the Democrats being upset about the impeachment because that's what they want to throw out there. It's not. This is something that started seven years ago and Trump fought every step of the way and did not want um, the Congress to gain access to this information. If for whatever reason, what you're doing is on the up and up, then I don't know why you fought it, but that's what he likes to do. He likes to stay in courts, he likes to fight it. And so we didn't end up getting information until the end of 2022, September of 22. By January of 23, Comer was now in place, and Comer says, never mind, stop the flow of information. So $8 million to the average American probably sounds like a lot of money. Here's the deal. There's even more money. We know more money exists, and we don't know who it came from. We don't know about his businesses in Russia. We don't know if we are in the middle of these wars that we're supposed to be helping our friends out, yeah. and they're being precluded from getting that help because of some money maybe that was paid to Trump. We don't know. And that's the big problem, and that's the scary problem. And what's even scarier is that this guy is trying to get back into office. I know you you yourself mentioned that you don't really have a sense of what the entirety of the picture looks like, right? As you said, you've only, and I know that Congressman Raskin has said this himself, right? What you have is just a fraction of the total foreign payments. So just to, to help us understand the scale of what we're talking about, approximately how much money are we talking about here? We're talking about approximately $8 million so far. So far. And this is, so far. And this is on the conservative side. So um, the committee uh, staff, who did a fantastic job, um, they skewed on the side of 
conservatism. Mm. So all of these numbers are downplayed. If they only had, say, for instance, a situation where um, the PRC China did a deposit for $19,000 for a stay, but we never received the records for how long they actually stayed and what the actual costs were, they only went with the $19,000 deposit. They didn't do anything as it relates to the actual monies because we didn't have that information. Mm -hmm. So I need people to understand that. And of the 8 million, approximately 8 million, approximately um, 5 million of it was actually from China. And we know right now, one of the things that the president has been trying to pass in the supplemental is support for Taiwan. We know that China for sure gave over these monies and that's pretty much all mm -hmm. we know. We know that we can coincide some visits um, to Mayor Lago with um, various monies that were exchanged. We also know now that he's filed his disclosures for the 20, uh, for the upcoming presidential election that he absolutely received some trademarks out of China while he was a sitting president. Well, yeah, let, me ask you, okay. let me ask you this then. Was that the most um, alarming or concerning revelation for you? I know, I know you, you keep mentioning China. Was that the most sort of alarming thing you found or what shocked you personally the most? I don't know. The whole thing was bad. It was a lot. You know, knowing mm -hmm. that he was taking money from um, Saudi Arabia at the same time that he was ignoring the advice of his own advisors and entering into this arms deal with Saudi Arabia. I mean, there's a lot of scary things in this report. And as people are on edge with war, um, you know, this only makes me more on edge about the possibility of him regaining access to the White House. And I honestly feel like this guy sold us out before. Um, we know that we still don't understand fully what the secrets look like. They were sitting down at Mar-a-Lago, but we know that he was reckless and intentionally reckless um, with our secrets and with the secrets of our friends. And so for me, I am concerned for our safety. And I want Americans to understand that while I know we love to live in a bubble, uh, we're not. Mm -hmm. The Republicans are a threat. Tuberville was making a, a huge issue for us for national security. Trump is a walking national security threat, as well as a constitutional crisis, all mixed up in one. Mm. Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, thank you so much for, for helping us understand all of these matters and for breaking down everything for us. I really appreciate it.